Okay. Right, so the two word problems uh, are left. We're going to hopefully do this one first. So we know Earth rotates on its axis. The distance from the axis to the location on Earth, 40 degrees north latitude, is about 3,033 and a half miles. Um, and then they say, therefore, location at that latitude is spinning on a circle of a radius of 3,033 and a half miles. So I think what they're trying to tell us, I'm not really sure that they, I guess they did word it right. So what they're saying is that um, if you're in this spot here, then the radius of the circle that you would get if you look at the track as you spin around and around and around, that radius is the 3,033 and a half miles. Okay, so if I don't know if you remember this from a while back, but the actually the Earth's radius, well, you might be able to guess at it. So if that's the radius up here, is that going to be more or less than the actual radius of the whole Earth? It should be a little less, right? Because if you look at this, like if you scoot down, actually, if you drop that here onto the equator where the radius is the largest, does that make sense? If you look at it flat from the top from a bird's eye view, then you would actually be spinning on the interior of the of the outside of the Earth, okay? Because you went up north a little bit. So the rotation here is the the dotted line over there. Okay. Um, how in the world do we get a linear speed out of this? So linear speed is what again? And I'm going to do this sort of the old-fashioned way first. It's literally just the distance divided by the time, right? Okay. And then we had a symbol for that, which was s over t, with s being a distance. And then earlier today, somebody told me, well, that's theta times r divided by t. So right now, I have only one of the three things, and that would be I have the radius. <coughs> well, what else do we know about the Earth? Yeah, it's connected to the radius. I'm sort of, sort of done with that. I'm looking for like general knowledge, which and you're gonna laugh a little bit maybe when I tell you what I'm looking for. So, what else do you know about the Earth that connects something to angles and time? This is the angle of rotation, right? Theta is the yeah. One full rotation. What? One full rotation takes how long? takes 24 hours, doesn't it? So that means that you go 2 pi radians in 24 hours. Yes? Well then that gives me an angle and then that gives me a time that I can also plug in. You guys sort of see how you come up with it from something that you know there? So the velocity at this point and that's pretty close to where we are, right? It might be a little north of where we are. Would be, well, one full rotation at a radius of 3,033 and a half miles, and that's going to take us 24 hours. I should put the unit there. Okay? So can somebody multiply this mess out and tell me how many miles per hour that is? Because <coughs> that's what this means, right? We're going to end up with miles per hour. So, seven hundred and ninety four point one seven miles per hour. That's pretty fast, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? So, what should you be extremely grateful for that we have? Gravity. Gravity. Otherwise, you would be flying off the face of the Earth at a pretty good speed. I mean, if you hit a tree at that speed, I don't think you'll be able to talk about it. Okay? You guys okay with this? All right. Okay. Um, so here's a problem with gears. So a gear with an outer radius of 5 centimeters. So the reason they say outer radius is... So if that was the center, if you go to the outside over here, so that distance from here to here, that's 5 centimeters. Yes? causing an interlocking gear with an outer radius of 4 to move in a counterclockwise direction at an angular speed of and 25 revolutions per minute. Okay, what's the angular speed of the larger gear? So this takes a moment maybe to wrap your mind around. So, um, you know, we're given a bunch of stuff here. W2, R2, 
So angular speed of the small one, the radius of the small one, the radius of the large one, and we're asked to find this one. We're asked to find W1 here. So what do we know? Just in general terms, what do you know about these wheels? I mean, they don't necessarily need to turn at the same at the, at the same rotational speed, right? I mean, but what do you know? Well, I mean, what do you know between the two gears that has to be equal? Not the revolutions. Yeah, they both use the same amount of time, right? Mm, the angle would be... I don't think so. I don't think it's the angle. If you imagine a piece of paper through here that's sort of being propelled, right? So that would be the same piece of paper for both of them, right? The length of that paper, if as it's being pulled through these wheels, has to be the same, right? And the length of that paper represents what? The length of the paper is actually a... Not a speed, it's a length is... It's a distance. The distance of that piece of paper that's being propelled has to be the same for both sides, right? Otherwise, your paper would be in two places at once, and that's impossible. Does that make sense a little bit? What you know here is that the distance traveled is equal. You okay? Is everybody okay with that? Okay. The time is equal as well. Okay, that w that is important. Time is equal because it's not like one gear can move independently. So these two things are equal. And if distance is equal to the time is equal, then what does that mean? Distance over time is what? Velocity. velocity. Okay, so but it's the linear velocity, right? And when you guys said something about rotations and angles, that's more of an angular velocity. So linear speed. which is distance over time is equal for both gears. We okay with this? Well, we have a little formula for that, right? Linear speed, so we'll do the large one first. Linear speed is angular speed times the radius, isn't it? Okay, so that's for this larger gear, so that's velocity 1. Velocity 2, so I should put little sub ones here and sub ones there. So the velocity for the second gear is also angular speed times its radius. Since you know that the two must be equal, what do you know about omega 1 times r? That has to equal that has to equal which is omega 2 times r2 correct out of these four how many do we have out of these four variables how many do we have three do we have the radius for the first gear okay do you have the angular speed for the second gear Right. And in this case, you can use 25 revolutions per minute because they're just going to express it in revolutions per minute. And R2 is 4, right? So you solve this. So the angular speed of the first gear is 25 times 4. Well, that's nice. That's nice even 100. And 100 divided by 5 is? 20 revolutions per minute. Okay?